Ladies and gentlemen, the fight against COVID-19 is still yet not over. The first wave was detected January 25th, and the second wave started in February 27, and now we are currently in the third wave starting from September 25th, and currently we are undergoing CMCO. Brief snapshot about the situation of COVID-19 in Malaysia, Tan Sri Mohidin Yassin, who is the 8th Prime Minister of Malaysia, came into power in the midst of a political struggle. And despite that, he showcased excellent handling of the national health crisis. And the Director General of Health Malaysia, Tan Sri Dr. Nur Hisham Abdullah, also showed an immaculate handling of the situation. Undeniably, the political uncertainty in Malaysia has much or less contributed to the worsening of our third wave. Today, we are going to analyze and discuss the issues and problems that are being faced by our nation in order to solve this pandemic. There are many issues and problems related to COVID-19 pandemics. First and foremost, let's look into issues related to health. Malaysia face insufficiencies in terms of healthcare center or hospital, especially in significantly high cases area and less developed areas. Apart from that, we also face shortages concerning medical supplies and equipment like personal protective equipment, PPE, ICU beds, power amplifying respirators, COVID-19 test kit, and face mask. Medical staff, especially nurses and doctors, are also not sufficient to handle the pandemic. This problem was handled directly by ministries of health and indirectly by other ministries like ministries of finance, ministries of defense, and ministry of science technology and innovation. What are exactly the reasons for an insufficient event occurred in our country? There are many reasons associated with the problem, but I will only highlight three main reasons. First, our minister had taken an initiative to conduct a mass scale swab test in targeted area with new clusters. During the second wave, for example, more than 10,000 people were tested daily in the targeted areas. Can you imagine how much staff, supplies and equipment are needed. This indeed result in shortages. The second reason associated with shortage issues was because of high dependency on import supplies and equipment. For instance, before the development of COVID-19 test kit by many Malaysian companies, we depend 100% on the import test kit from other countries, especially South Korea. Last but not least, dramatic increase in COVID-19 cases in less developed, er developed areas and states resulted in insufficiencies in terms of hospital facilities and medical staff. We can closely relate this to the situation in Sabah.
Due to the impact of COVID-19, the government has taken a proactive measure in order to contain the virus by implementing Movement Control Order, or known as MCO, on 18 of March 2020. Dan untuk itu, kerajaan memutuskan untuk melaksanakan Perintah Kawalan Pergerakan mulai 18 Mac 2020 iaitu lusa hingga 31 Mac 2020 di seluruh negara. With this implementation, all government and private services are subject to close the operation except who those are involved in the essential services such as banking and telecommunication service. Therefore, most of the businesses are very concerned with reducing customer trust towards their business. This also include micro and small business enterprise where they are the most impacted during this outbreak. This is because people are now directed to stay at home for the self-quarantine. The reduction in customer trust will lead to reduction in customer spending. If the reduction in consumer spending is continued to decrease, the real GDP of the country will drop. From the latest report by International Monetary Fund IMF on October 2020, the real GDP of Malaysia had declined from 4.3% to negative 6%. Therefore, with this declination in real GDP, it will lead to recession and increase in unemployment rate.
Next, issue and problem related to education due to the COVID-19. As we know, due to the COVID-19, all economic institutions such as school, private and public city have been closed in Malaysia. According to our Minister of Education, Dr. Razid Chidin and Minister of Higher Education, Dr. Rahmi Ahmad, stated that the decision to close all school and university was taken following the implementation of the Conditional Movement Order, CMCO, in all states in Malaysia. The move is taken to assist effort by the government to break the chain of COVID-19 infection. Therefore, due to the close of all educational institutions, all teaching and learning have been moved to remote learning or online learning for students to continue their studies. Keempat ialah penutupan semua taska sekolah kerajaan dan swasta termasuklah sekolah harian, sekolah berasrama penuh, sekolah antarabangsa, pusat tahfiz dan lain-lain institusi pendidikan rendah, menengah dan pra-universiti. Kelima ialah penutupan semua institusi pendidikan tinggi, IPT awam dan swasta serta institut latihan kemahiran di seluruh negara. However, many problem has been arise regard to the online learning and teaching. One of the problem is limited accessibility and technological device among students. Many students, especially from rural area and poor family background, doesn't have sufficient internet connection and device to participate in online classes. According to the multiple C, that have been reported by Tarvin Gill, about 36.9% students in Malaysia unable to participate or access to online classes due to the lack of devices such as smartphone and also computer. Also, survey conducted by the Education Minister found that only 5.8% of students in Malaysia able to possess the tablet computer while 48.5% rely on smartphone only. On top of that, online learning is more expensive than traditional learning to students as they need to pay or buy or purchase internet data frequently in order to get information and join online classes every day. The second problem arises due to the online learning during COVID-19, it gives a bad impact on student mental health. It is because due to the lack interaction, face-to-face -face interaction between student and student and student and teacher. Most of the time, students will have to spend their time studying in their bedroom alone and finish their assignment without close assist from the educator and friends. Sometimes, it's hard for students to ask questions to the educator directly to the online classes. Eventually, students have to be independent most of the time during online classes. Moreover, the overload work, such as assignment and tasks during the online classes also lead to the student mental health problem. On top of that, students need to be to be balanced between their responsibility as a child at home and student at school at the same time, which give them more pressure during online learning. Thus, it can increase anxiety and depression among students. It can be seen that 60.6% student in Malaysia has experienced anxiety level and 2.8% of student in Malaysia have experienced most severe anxiety level. The result from the problem, the number of students drop out from schools and university is increasing over the year due to the COVID-19 in 2020 in Malaysia.